Hi everyone. Right, so let's just jump into the process for getting British Gas Heat Pump Survey and Estimate Online. So we're on their uh, website. I've put in my address, which I'm deliberately hiding from you this time. I'm going to do better at not accidentally releasing my address online. Um, and they want to choose you what type of terrorist you are. So we are terrorist. I'm a homeowner. Yes, I am. We have, I don't know, 11 radiators. Do I have, you know, I think this is just questions so sort of basically can, are we going to stop the questionnaire right now? Uh, so you've got to say, yes, I've got room outside. Yes, I've got theoretical uh, room for a um, uh, heat pump. Right, and then we'll put in my name, and you kind of know my name, but I'm going to have to make sure that I don't put my phone number and email online. All right, so they're estimating online that I've got an 8 kilowatt heat loss. Mm, incorrect. Um, and oh, but the interesting thing is they do tell you how much you're going to pay monthly. Uh, depending on how you're going to pay off. So if you want a 0% finance, they'll give you that for just two years. That's quite good. Um, and the uh, five grand, they'll pay that back in in that amount. But um, then you've got to go into talk to an expert and they'll book you in. Oops, something went wrong. Something went wrong is that I'm already in the process and I've already had them round. Um, so yeah, they're saying that their low end, probably for a zero disrupt type install, uh, is only five grand. So that's not too bad, is it? Um, that's on the cheap end. So that'll be the aim for a... a, a That'll be for a 55 to move flow system. Um, whereas what I would want is more like a 50 or below. A 45 might be out of reach for my house. Um, slash for what I think is an acceptable amount to pay uh, to upgrade all the radiators, etc. Um, although we'll see when you come round. Um, so yeah, this is the British Gas uh, website on how they sort things out. Now, what would it look like if you were to pay that over 10 years at 10%? Then you're paying seven grand. So you've kind of doubled your cost almost uh, for the interest you pay. What about... Over three years, well, you're adding uh, almost a grand to your price uh, through the interest payments, but you're paying 150 pounds a month rather than 200. So if you're very price sensitive, this makes sense. Uh, although do have a look at whether your uh, mortgage provider will just give you free money for one. Um, and actually some mortgage providers give you about five grand. So you can get this completely free with a government grant and with a grant from your mortgage provider because they need a certain amount of finance that's in green finance. They want a certain amount of their mortgage portfolio into a green mortgage portfolio, i.e. Um, if they're giving you money so that you upgrade your IP, uh, EPC by putting heat pump in, by putting solar panels in, by putting insulation in, uh, that's worth money to them. Um, so they are willing to give you free money. So do look into that. Um, I think Halifax give you two or five grand. Now West give you two or five grand. Or there might not even be an upper limit to some of these banks. They, they might give you more than you think. Um, and I know that Nationwide, my bank, uh, will give me up to 15 grand interest-free mortgage. Not free, but an interest-free mortgage uh, for two years. It's a two-year loan, which is free, basically, secured on my property. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, and I'll cover the rest of um, my rambling review of the British Gas um, heat, Heating Survey. That's, that's just everybody, another day, another heat loss survey. Uh, this time we've had British Gas around. Just thought I'd better shop around as much as possible, see if there's any cheaper options or any um, quicker options, or just if everyone agrees with what the heat loss of this house should be. Um, and interesting results. So interesting result number one, British Gas agree with the original Heat Geek and the original Octopus survey that the heat loss is around 11.5. I think he said 11.8 kilowatts today. Um, they use the heating engineer software that you can get a free version of um, that you just um, size up the room with his pictures, with screens, with a laptop, with a software app, uh, and that creates the room. Um, you does need to manually put in the dimensions of the room for the vaulted ceilings in the eaves. And then he individually asked me about the different building fabrics uh, of the different part of the house. Solid brick here on the main part of the rear extension cavity walls here the main part of the house is solid brick uh, and then where our insulation is the flat part of the roof 300 mils the sloped part of the roof 50 mils and the new um, roof on the rear extension 300 mils and um, so we went through all that and what that would mean for the heat loss which is about um 11.8 kilowatts um, and therefore you would need a 12 kilowatt valent heat pump for this house and um, so the interesting thing about that means it's a double unit we knew that from the original heat geek survey almost a year ago now uh, from green home solutions who were great um, but back then there were some different planning laws about heat pumps back then you couldn't have a heat pump within a meter of your adjacent property i would have clearance for that i've got 2.7 meters between this uh, wall of my property and uh, the boundary wall just over here out of shot, uh, which is 2.7 metres away. You'd have to measure from the front of the pump, which, I don't know, would be 2 metres away, more than 
But there's a noise threshold, the MCS noise threshold calculator. And from where this seat pump would be positioned here to my property is three meters. And from my property to where the next habitable window or room is, is three meters. So the diagonal of that, three, three is five, I think, if my Pythagoras is correct. Um, <laughs> God, I'm trying to do a calculus in my head, but never mind. Um, so a year ago, used to have to be a meter away from a property and the sound threshold was 42 decibels uh, and that's sound power not um, necessarily noise it's a slightly different thing um, and it would have passed a year ago but now they try to relax the planning restrictions uh, but they've lowered the noise threshold so it didn't help at all um, the noise threshold was passed before at 42 decibels at my neighbor's window but now the thresholds were lowered to 37 and it's a logarithmic scale. So actually, um, for each two decibel as you go up, you're doubling the noise. Uh, so they've reduced, by lowering it from 42 to 37, they've actually um, reduced the, the, the amount of noise you can make by, not 10 times, but uh, by an exponential amount. Um, so it's kind of a bit silly. So the uh, noise pressure would be at um, 39 decibels. So you're failing it by two. And I asked him if I insulated my floor and I needed and uh, that dropped off two kilowatts of heat. Um, he said it would only drop off one, which is interesting. Um, but if it dropped off that, then we'd still be on a, a 10 kilowatt valent, which would still make the same amount of noise. Um, so that wouldn't help. So British Gas are just saying no to putting a heat pump in here for noise reasons. And if I tried a planning permission to try and mitigate that noise, I don't know if I put like a uh, some pleached trees or something as a barrier potentially to mitigate the noise they would still say no and apparently councils are so sensitive about noise and noise complaints um, even though these peat pumps don't really make any noise and um, 42 decibels is actually literally whisper quiet and if I just um, be quiet for a minute can you hear my boiler? I certainly can it's louder than all the heat pumps I've heard and literally there's no rules about how loud those can be. <laughs> so it just puts into perspective um, that these uh, laws aren't necessarily uh, reasonable. Um, so if you would like to write to your MP and Ed Miliband and get the planning <laughs> laws revamped again for heat pumps to make his, uh, he wants 300,000 heat pumps by uh, 2030 per year, um, not in total, but per year, then he really needs to get these things sorted. So it's at 39 decibels of noise when I'm going to be um, doing my hot water cycle is not an unreasonable amount. Um, and certainly, you know, um, nothing, nothing that's going to keep anyone awake at night. So yes, my, um, oh, uh, my British gas uh, heat pump survey is a, uh -uh, uh, which is a bit frustrating, um, but they think it could be technically done. We just have to talk about where we'd put the radiator upgrades and they were gonna quote me around what Heat Geek are quoting me at uh, for a, a Scopa 4 system, 48 flow t degree temperature uh, sized system uh, was gonna be around seven or 8,000 um, pounds. They didn't give me a final number on it because they weren't gonna go ahead. Uh, but in, in theory, I should have uh, dragged it out of him. What the, uh, what, the, what the price might have been if they could say yes. Now, final thing about this was, um, he was a heating engineer. He'd been doing boiler servicing and repairs uh, for British Gas for 20 years, but has moved into the heat pump surveying lot. He said it was supposed to be temporary, but he's turned it permanent because he enjoys it. Um, and it seems better than being on your knees and uh, getting into the small corners and getting your hands mucky servicing a boiler uh, than going around people's houses and having a nice chat. And it was certainly a really nice and uh, good uh, um, surveyor and heating engineer. But um, one of the things the British gas technical team says was they didn't like the enclosed courtyard and they thought it would be a um, heat sink, if you like. So they were worried that what it would do Uh, just checking it's still working. Great. Um, so they were worried that what would happen would be that you would just circulate loads of cold air. Uh, and I seem to remember from a Heat Geek video that I'll put a link to here um, that actually that doesn't happen. Um, so I remember a video where um, Heat Geek put heat pump in an enclosed space and they tried to see if it really would lower the temperature of an area. Uh, and, it, and it really didn't. 
And this gate over here is far from an airtight zone. And the fans are so powerful on these units that it's just going to blow the air over the wall that's, a, that's directly opposing them. So I don't really buy that. And the thing that I thought I could do is perhaps I could just cut a hole in the gate or if I ever need a new one because the wooden gate's looking a bit tired. I could cut a hole in the gate and just put a, uh, just put a mesh over it so no one could come in, like a, a little griddle if you like. Uh, and that would encourage airflow. But yeah, that's a, that's a no from, um, from British Gas. The final interesting thing was that the heat loss was uh, the same as the original Octopus uh, estimate, 11.8 kilowatts, and the original Heat Geek heat loss, 11.4 kilowatts, within a tolerable amount of difference. But what is different is that the Octopus second survey came out at 14 and a half or 15 kilowatts. I think he even cheated to make it 14 and a half. I don't know what don't know what setting he changed to sort of reduce it from super high to only 14 and a half. Um, I think it was about whether we got the chimney blocked up. Um, yeah, I think that's what it was. So let me know in the comments if you've got any advice or any interesting, interesting uh, thoughts on that. Um, and um, Heat Geek are coming round for the zero disrupt kind of service uh, by uh, another local firm that aren't green home heating, just to see if um, they can do it cheaper than the 13 and a half grand that Green Home Solutions um, said that was their initial quote. And if they did a zero disrupt esque style before he, uh, Geek had invented that, that their quote would be about 9,000 pounds. So we'll see if we can undercut that significantly uh, and whether I fancy going ahead with it. Um, because uh, yeah, getting a lot of um, eco anxiety at the moment. Uh, certainly with uh, our winter sun flight to Egypt being about eight tons of CO2, so I'm feeling really guilty about that. I do try and uh, look after our carbon footprint and keep it as low as possible with an EV, with thinking about getting solar, with thinking about getting this heat pump, um, and we try and do all our summer holidays not by a flight and by a ferry to the Netherlands or to Disneyland or, you know, whatever. Check out all the videos on my, th on my service, but uh, on my channel. But uh, yeah, we haven't quite thought of a way to stop us being so miserable in the winter uh, when it's cold for so long uh, that it doesn't involve flying yet. Uh, although this is the only second time we've ever done it. So perhaps I'm just feeling guilty for no reason. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, of course, you know, I'm only a minor hypocrite, hopefully not a massive one. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'll see you in the next one.